the Lord for being here today. Amen. Bishop uh, Spence mentioned the communion to me a few weeks ago, and I said, well, let me know when, and we'll try to be there. So here we are. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody that's here tonight. Amen. Hope we can say something to encourage somebody. Amen. There's a subject I'd like to deal with tonight. I don't know. I'm going to try my best to tie this together. Uh, I'd mentioned this scripture to Bishop Spence uh, last night. and He said he had brought this scripture out a little bit here a few weeks ago. So just pray for me as I try to bring this out tonight. Isaiah chapter 5. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I don't guess we're in a hurry, are we? All right, the ones as you're finding Isaiah chapter 5. Amen. If you really believe that we're living in the end time, I do. I believe I was called, and I believe the rest of the ministry was called for this purpose for such a time as we're living in. And as we was, uh, I don't remember the exact conversation the other day, me and my wife was in town and. Uh, uh, we had mentioned something about, uh, oh, I guess it was the storms that we see, all the uh, hail, the tornadoes, uh, all, the, all the things that's even went on today. The other day, uh, there was tornadoes out in Oklahoma and Texas and different places, and mentioned about the, uh, the way that the weather is changing, the way the world's changing. My wife made a statement, it's because there's so much evil. Amen. We're living in an evil time. Amen. I believe that the time that Noah, amen, lived in, it was a very evil uh, time. That's the reason uh, that, you know, things happened the way they did. God destroyed this place by water once. He said uh, in one scripture, he said he wouldn't do it that way again. He was going to destroy it with fire. And uh, the indignation of God is, I believe, is kindled against this earth and the corruption and the the sin and the iniquity and all these things that we're beholding in our generation. I mean, we look around and, uh, you know, it's one thing to see these things in the world, but when you see them uh, coming into congregations, amen, across this country, people no longer living the lifestyle of holiness like we was once taught. I know the folks in, in our assemblies do, but there's many churches that we've departed from, amen, had to break ties with because of their stance, amen, on the way that they're living, amen. And I've, I've, uh, I've had friends that I've recently, you know, in the last couple of years broke fellowship with because, amen, they want to live like the world instead of living for God. Amen. They want to say that they're of God and they want to be able to do whatever they want to do instead of the way God that wants us to do. And it's commanded in the Scriptures. Amen. In the New Testament, if you just want to use New Testament Scriptures, and that's what many times they'll tell you, well, we're living in the New Testament. Well, Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 12, he, he was pleading with the Roman church. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice Sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is the Holy Ghost is something, brother, that we've got to keep renewed daily. Because if we don't, Amen. I read, uh, preached a message here recently about the the virgins, how that some was wise and some was foolish. Some let it leak out, and when the you know, when the bridegroom came, they, they didn't have, they wasn't prepared. There was no oil in their lamps, and they wanted to borrow some, but you know, it wasn't none to share when it comes, there ain't going to be nothing to share when it comes your turn to stand before the Lord. Amen, but I was thinking last night, and I was thinking today, and it just keeps bearing on my mind about these Scriptures here in Isaiah chapter 5. We find Israel, amen, the children of God, amen, in disobedience throughout many places in the Old Testament. Amen. And uh, we see every time that they walked in disobedience, the blessings of God, they, didn't, they wasn't able to obtain the blessings of God. But when they walked in obedience, then they received the blessings of God. Amen. I, I want... I, uh, me, 
in my, you know, myself, I want to, I want to be blessed of God, not the nat- so much the natural things. Those things are good, and I believe God will bless you with those things. But I want those spiritual things, Amen. That re- that you know, I have confidence in. I mean, once you have felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I mean, you'll ne- uh, if you know if you let that like those what, that was unwise, if you let that leak out, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna know it, and there's nothing that's gonna satisfy you like the anointing or the of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing in this world that the world's got to offer, I mean, that will satisfy you. Hey Amen. I, I know sometimes you know uh, going out here and ministering. Amen. Uh, maybe there'll be two or three nights between service, and I'm not satisfied. I want to preach every night. I, and not, it's not just that I want to preach, but I want to be with God's people constantly. And uh, the brother was telling me before church, he plans, tries to plan his vacations around things that's going on with the church, the convocations, the, the, the tent meetings, and things like this. I think that's what we need to do. Amen. A lot of times, you know, in the world, I, I know preachers that, uh, you know, out here uh, that's planning their vacations. They've got, uh, they've got homes in Tennessee that they go on vacation. And they'll ne- while they're on vacation, they'll never enter a church door. Amen. But I want to constantly keep this thing fired up and with, within me. Isaiah chapter 5, we want to read just a little bit tonight. Uh, I had some scriptures marked here, but <laughs> probably lost my papers already, but that's okay. Isaiah chapter 5, uh, verse... Let's see where we want to start reading. About verse 11... It says, it speaks this way. It says, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink and continue until night, till wine inflame them. And the harp and the vial and the tabret and the pipe, and the pipe and the wine are in their feast, but they regard not the work of the Lord. Neither consider the operation of his hands. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory. And it says, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the men shall, shall be brought down, the mean man shall be brought down, the mean man shall be brought down. Let's repeat that one more time. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of that fat ones shall strangers eat. Amen. Let's go to the book of Matthew just for a moment. Hallelujah. I want you to, uh, before we get there to Matthew chapter 16, I want to rephrase this just one more time. Verse 14, it says, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. Before we get into Matthew chapter 16, I want to, Make a few statements here. Amen. We, as the church of Jesus Christ, a people that are called by His name, we have the power to bind the powers of hell. Amen. Whereas hell hath enlarged itself, the Scripture says, 
And Jesus Christ that we preach, He has defeated both death, hell, and the grave. Amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 16, we find Peter, amen, which was actually until he was converted, amen, he walked with Jesus. Anybody knows the Scriptures, amen, Jesus even told him that he was going to be converted. Amen. As he was following Jesus, amen, uh, you, you look at his life, amen, the, the way that he walked, he was, kind of, he was kind of an outspoken person. He was kind of unruly at times. In many places, amen, there was disbelief until his conversion, his true conversion. Amen. But we look at Peter, and amen, here in the 16th chapter, he was given the keys to the kingdom. Amen. I want to read just a few few verses here in the 16th chapter. Amen. Beginning at about verse 13. It says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that Thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father. When he speaks of his Father, he's talking about his, his Spirit, which was God. God is a Spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Spirit. It took Spirit to reveal this to him, Brother J.J. Amen. It didn't come by a fleshly manner. Amen. It didn't come by a fleshly understanding, but it came by revelation and it came by knowledge that only the Spirit of God can give us. Amen. And the Bible says in verse 18, and he said, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock or this revelation or this knowledge to know who he was. Amen. Think about this just for a moment. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And, I like this, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want to rephrase another thing. It says, we, as the church, have the power, amen, to bind the powers of hell. Amen. Bishop Spence was speaking about preaching the Gospel. Amen. If the Bible says in one place, just to paraphrase just a little bit, if this Gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Amen. But it wasn't His will, the Bible says, that any would be lost, but that they would come to repentance. Amen, there is a message for the hour. Amen, there's a message for today. There's a message for this generation. As as, uh, Brother Troy preached, I believe it was at convocation last year, preach the Gospel. Amen, the Gospel of Jesus Christ is what's going to save you. Amen, the Gospel of Jesus Christ is what's going to heal you. Amen, it was because of His blood that He shed on, on Calvary that we sung about a while ago. If it's just one, blood, one uh, drop of blood, amen, that blood it can cleanse us and it can make us whole. Amen, one writer, amen, uh, wrote, it said, by His stripes we are healed. And another one said, 
said, with His stripes we are healed. Amen. In the Old Testament, they was looking forward, amen, into time, amen, through prophecy to know that the Messiah was going to come upon the scene. Amen. And this particular prophet, I believe it was Isaiah, he had, I believe he was one of the most knowledgeable prophets of the Old Testament. Amen. When he wrote in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, he said unto us, a child, a, a son is given, uh, amen, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. The Bible speaks about the many titles of that name. Amen. But by the process of time, amen, amen, and and God Himself, Amen, becoming flesh, Amen. First Timothy three sixteen says, "Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifested into the flesh." Amen. When He was manifested, Amen. He robed Himself in human flesh, and He became the Lamb, Amen, that was slain. Amen. The Bible even talks, Amen, one place about a a Lamb that was slain from the family foundation of the world. See, He had a plan all the way from when earth was first began to be made. As we read in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, amen, even into the time of the flood, amen, we read about God doing these things, amen, by His Word. Amen. The New Testament says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And I tell folks, uh, amen, a lot of the Trinitarian doctrine, amen, I said you can't separate the Word from God. Amen. Amen. The Word was what came forth from God. Amen. And I refer to it this way. If Brother Jared or, or uh, Brother JJ or any of the brothers would speak, there is a Word, there is a sound that comes forth. Amen. But that does not make a separate person. Amen. That is a manifestation of the inward man being manifest to others. And that's what Jesus Christ, He was the manifestation of the invisible God. Amen. But I, 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 I begin to think about these Scriptures today. Amen. How that there in the Old Testament, how that hell hath enlarged herself because of disobedience of the people of God. Amen. You know, you can read in the Old Testament, and I, I've had some preachers say, well, you, can, you know, uh, uh, the, the one prophet there that it speaks about that he was perfect. Uh, uh, who was it? Uh, uh, Job, amen, said he was a perfect man. He was... He, 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 he was perfect and upright, and I've heard preachers say, well, that Bible don't mean perfect. The Bible means exactly what it says. If it said he was a perfect man, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't put your finger on him. He was perfect. Amen. And he lived uprightly before God. He pleased God. We read about others in the Old Testament. Amen. They had a testimony that pleased God. Amen. And if we have, as the church of Jesus Christ today, if we have that testimony, amen, we are a part of that church if we have that testimony. But here's what separates the body. Amen. The Bible says in the New Testament, it says sin is what separates the body. Amen. When sin and iniquity and these things come into the body of Christ, it's what separates us. Amen. From God, from the blessings. Amen. From the Holy Ghost from the things that God wants us to be walking in. It hinders us. It draws us back. Yes, we're, you know, we've, we're, we've got a, a body of flesh that we walk around, we war against, but when we let that, amen, override what God wants us to do, amen, God wants us to live, uh, as I preached there the other night in the book of Titus, I believe it is, He wants us to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, amen, that's the way that He created us, He created us in righteousness, in holiness, amen, He created us a perfect being. Amen. The reason I believe that Jesus Christ came, it was to redeem man back to, uh, you know, He was in a fallen state and he, sit, he come here in human flesh to redeem us back to Him. 
to that original state. But listen, I tell you, we're living in the, I believe we're living, I, I know, it's just not that I believe, but I look around and I can see. Anybody that's got eyes can look around and see. Hey man, this world is in trouble. Hey man. Bible says when iniquity would, uh, when the love of many, talks about the love of many, and iniquity would abound, the love of many would wax cold. Hey man, we're living in that time. No longer do people love one another. As I preached the other night, we have to love one another if we're a part of this body. Hey Amen. We have to function. We have to, we have to, we have to be able to function in the body. We have to be able to move. Hey Amen. A body moves, it groans, it, and we're groaning in travail in this in this t a tabernacle that we're in down here. We're constantly in travail. This is a pressing way. One writer said this is a pressing way. We have to press our way into the kingdom. Amen. It's a pressing way. It's not, it's not a bed of roses. Amen. But when we deny ourselves, Amen. Jesus told His own disciples, He said, you're going to have to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Me. Amen. People don't want persecution. But when you stand for the name of Jesus Christ, Amen, and you stand for holiness, you stand for the Word of God, you're going to suffer... You're going to suffer by it. Every time you're going to lose friends. I know we don't see it like the early church seen it, but I believe we're, get, we're living in a time now, amen, that we're going to start seeing some things. We're going to see some more persecution. Amen. The closer we get to the coming of the Lord, I believe with all my heart. I know in some of these foreign countries, amen, there's people being killed, they say, for the gospel. Amen. But this gospel... I'm talking about this gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. The same gospel that those early apostles preached. Those early disciples, amen, that was taken out and they was martyred. Amen. And they suffered. And many of them, you can read some of the early uh, uh, writings like the book of martyrs and different things, amen, before Catholicism took a hold, amen, and they was taking Christians out, they was hanging them on trees, amen, they was beheading them, they was beating them, they were stoning them. What makes us think that we're any better than the early church? Amen. When it comes right down to it, a lot of Holy Ghost, so-called Holy Ghost people, when it comes to persecution, you ain't going to find them, amen, because they don't want it. But I want what God's got, amen. If He, wa he, wa he wants to try me by fire, Lord, I, I, I tell you what, gold, when it comes out of the fire, it's tried by fire, and it's made, it's made pure, and He, re he likens us as to that gold that's tried in the fire, a refiner's fire. Persecution sometimes. You say, Brother Jim, you're talking, we, we're going to have to go through persecution? Early church did. He told His disciples, He said, if you don't suffer with Me, you're not going to reign with Me. Sometimes we get on a job, Brother Clarence, and we maybe maybe testify or tell somebody you know, about what we believe, and sometimes it may even escalate into an argument from their side. But when you know, when you look at the Bible and what they went through, praise God, are you willing to go that far? Amen. To pull people out of the pits of hell. Man, a preacher told me a few years ago, just a few years ago, he said, preached for probably 60 years. And probably 40 of those years he preached in the assembly of God until he seen the revelation of the name of Jesus Christ. Hey man, and he told me, uh, he was on radio at that time when he seen the revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, in the assembly of God, they was calling him. And he was pastor in a church in Louisiana that over 500 people... And they was calling him to the corporate headquarters there in that area about every month or so, telling him when he'd come up before the, the, the presbyter and the rest of them, they'd say, you're preaching too much, Jesus. Amen. And when he realized, B Bishop Spence, what he was preaching, and amen, that revelation 
came his way. Amen. He was on radio up in Ohio. Amen. And he, he told me, he said, Brother Jim, I had to get on radio and all those people that had been listening for me for years and years, I had to tell them that I was wrong. When you come to the knowledge of God, you've got to lay aside tradition. Amen. You have to lay aside sometimes even family. Amen. Uh, a lot of times, I, I know I've got family, probably Brother Spence does too, that don't believe in this plan of salvation. They don't believe in this message. Amen. We still love them. Amen. But I'm going to preach the Word regardless who uh, it is, whether it be my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter, my wife. It don't matter who it is. I'm going to stand for this Gospel. Amen. The Bible says, if the Gospels we said a while ago be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And whom the God of this world hath blinded, they've blinded their eyes and their minds that they can't receive this. But listen, there's we read, amen, about Peter, about uh, hell being enlarged there in the book of Isaiah, amen. It said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. Amen. We may be few in number sometimes. Amen. And I tell you, Brother Spence, it's a good. You, you made you. This may not be a bigger crowd as there's going to be tomorrow. But I'm very privileged to preach to this number of people because there has been times I've preached to two, three people. One one time was on radio and I had to do a uh, or TV and had to do a TV broadcast and I was I was the only one that showed up, so I had to have it on the air by I think it was Monday, so I had to preach. Amen. But if this gospel's hid, it's hid to them lost. And hell is a real place. Amen. Hell hath enlarged itself, but the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Amen. If you would just for a moment, let's go over to the book of 2 Peter. There in the first chapter, we're going to go down to start about verse 19. But just to give you a prelude to what, it, what it's speaking about. Amen. Peter was an eyewitness there on the mount. Transfiguration. Amen. And he explains to... He's explaining in this letter it was to give that man Christ Jesus all the glory and honor that was due Him. I mean, here in the 10th verse, as we begin to read, it says, we have also a more sure word. See, they, they, they was there, they seen this. Hey man, the prophets, as we spoke about a while ago, they prophesied about this. Amen. But the Bible says here, it says, we also, we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not of old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God spake they were moved as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the Bible says, but there were false prophets. When's it speaking about? When's it speaking about? Amen. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, 
Yes, it is. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared, listen to what the Word says. And this is the reason I wanted to bring this, these Scriptures out about hell tonight. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved into judgment, spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Verse 7, And delivered just Lot vexed. Vexed. Let's just deal with this just for a minute. Vexed with his filthy, with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Hey man, you sometimes, Bishop Spence, I don't know how many's ever been on the job and the conversation. Uh, amen. Sometimes they'll be on the things of the world. Amen. The, uh, if you get, if you don't, if you're not very careful, you can fall, you can fall into the devil's trap. You'll get involved in a conversation, amen, and you let those things come in and before you know it, amen, you get vexed in your heart and in your soul because you've listened to the things that the devil has placed around you. Vexed. Amen. Tormented. Amen. God don't want you to be tormented. He don't want you to be vexed. Amen. You know, it wasn't because of Lot, but it was because of Abraham that Lot was able to come out of the city. Because there was a righteous man. Amen. And because his prayer, amen, with, uh, with God was answered. God answered Abraham's prayer when he brought Lot and his daughters out of that city. But the Bible says Lot was vexed with their conversation daily. Amen. If you listen to the things of the world long enough, Hey man, the things on the job. I remember what it was like to work construction. Hey man, the things on the job. You hear the filthy communication. Hey man, the four letter, five letter words. You hear the everything that's immoral. Hey man, everything that's against God continually. And if you're not careful, hey man, it will vex you and it will take you away from the anointing of God. Amen. And I, I, listen, I, the reason I'm saying these things, we're living in a time, amen, brother Richard, amen, that we're going to have to we're going to have to hold on with every ounce of uh, of being that we've got to God because His return is nigh, and amen. And if we're not, I said, if we're not ready, amen. Think about this tonight. Hell's not going to be the last thing. Hell and death's not going to be the last thing. The Bible says, "In death and hell shall be cast into the fire that burneth forever and ever." That lake of fire is going to continually burn, regardless of what anybody teaches out here in the world. That is a perpetual. Uh, it's forever, just like eternity is going to be forever for us. Amen. That torment. Amen. That torture. Amen. Is going to be forever because of disobedience. Amen. But the blessings of God. I mean, if we just walk the way He wants us to walk. I mean, if we just walk. Let's go to Revelations just for a moment. Chapter 21. Hallelujah. Some of my favorite verses here in the 19th and 20th, 21st chapters of the book of Revelations. I don't teach on the book of Revelations. I do a little preaching out of it. Amen. Amen. I want to get down 21 and 8, but I want to begin reading about verse 11 of the 20, 20th chapter. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. 
And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Oh, they say you don't, it's not about works. Huh? According to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell. Listen, and death and hell, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Think about this. And they were judged every man according to their works. That's the reason it's important to live right before God. Have good works. You know, if you got a Bible talks about a good tree brings forth good fruit. If it don't bring forth good fruit, it's going to be you down, chopped down. Verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire that is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast, was cast into the lake of fire. Now I saw, I don't want to stop there. I'm trying to show you hell. I'm showing, trying to show you eternal punishment. But I want to show you the good things. Amen. Verse 1 says, And I saw a new heaven. And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away that's the reason I want to go amen because it's going to be a per perfect place there ain't going to be no sin there brother Clarence there's not going to be this iniquity that we have to there's not going to be this filthy conversation that the world has amen there's not going to be any of this former things, but it's going to be a place of God. Amen! And the, and the verse 5 is that He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. <laughs> Amen! I'm not going to be old, but I'm going to be new. Amen! I make all things new. Hallelujah! I like that. Amen! That's something to look forward to. A new body. <laughs> it's going to be a Body like unto Him. Hey man, I like that. Yeah. Hallelujah, you won't have the pain in the knee no more. Won't have the pain in the arm no more. Won't have the backache. Hey man, I'll be able to, I don't know what I'll be able to do, but I'll do a lot better than I've done here. Right. Hey man, as far as, you know, I believe we're going to a place that the Bible says flesh and blood. People have got their minds made up. I'm going to a place and this whole, I'm going to be able to do the things I'm doing here. But it's going to be a place where flesh and blood's not going That Spirit, amen, that He put in us, it's going to be a place that that Spirit can dwell for eternity. And the reason there's not going to be no pain, Brother J.J., is because it's not going to be a carnal body that we inhabit there. It's not going to be fleshly, because flesh and blood, amen, these things are incorruption. But we're going to have an incorruptible body. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's going to live forever and ever and ever. Amen. Throughout the cycle ages of eternity. Verse 5, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountains of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Hallelujah. But the fearful, listen, here we revert right back. 
Amen to what we was reading about there in the first chapter. And the Bible says, But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the adult idolaters, and the li- all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Amen. That's some place I don't want to be. Hey Amen. I don't want to see my children there. I don't want to see my grandchildren there. I don't want to see my neighbors there. And I told them, I said, I wouldn't even want to see a dog or a cat go there. Hey Amen. Place of eternal punishment. We're serving a merciful God. Oh, they say, well, God's not that way. He's a, he's a God of mercy. Yes, He is a God of mercy. That's the reason He has given us a way of escape. Amen. To be able to escape these things. To be able to inherit eternal life through Christ Jesus. The good things that He's prepared for us. You know, a lot of people look at that Scripture where it says, I go away to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. They've got Jesus all dressed up as a carpenter with a belt on and a hammer and everything. Amen. But He went away to prepare a place that where He is, we could be also. Amen. He placed the Holy Ghost in us. Amen. I believe it's soon to come. He's going to come. As Brother Spence was talking a while ago, He's going to catch His bride out of here. He's going to take His church out of here. Amen. He's made a place for us. Amen. As we read, Amen. A place, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death. Listen, if God goes another... Just listen to me for a minute. If God would go another 75, 80 years, think about this. 75 or 80 years, we can't imagine this. We, can't, we don't want to deal with it. But if God would go another 80 years, me and Brother Spence would not be here. Most of you would not be here because you would go by the way of the grave. Hey Amen. Many before us have went by the way of the grave. Hey Amen. But listen, through this gospel, amen, many of our forefathers obtained an inheritance. Amen. They made it to the other side. No more, the song goes, no more dying. (laughs) No more sighing. None. There'll never be a tear up there. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that, you know, that if somebody don't make it, I'm so glad if I get there, amen, I'm not going to be able to look over and see brother so and so, amen, in torment. Ain't you glad that you ain't going to be able to see that? But it's still real. If you don't make heaven, you've missed everything. You've missed, you missed the goodness of God. But you, listen, you really haven't missed everything. As we have explained to you, there's some things, amen, if you're not where you're supposed to be living with God tonight, amen, you'll miss out. Mentioned this Scripture to Bishop Spence today. I believe it was. Paul spoke in one of, the, one of his writings, amen, he was speaking about the many things that he'd set in order in the churches. Amen, the many, you know, he reproved, most of his life, he was repro- reproving people. Churches. You read, the, uh, you read the letters that he writes to the churches. He's bringing reproof to the churches, trying to correct them because many of them was like Israel. They was getting off track. But he said, he said, I fear lest I fall into the same things that I've preached against. Amen. We have to have a fear of God. Amen. And I, that's the reason I feel like bringing this message to you tonight. There needs to be a fear of God in the house of God. Amen. To know if you don't live to your full potential in God. Amen. That, that uh, I ain't going to say there's going to be a chance you don't make it. I'm going to say this. You're not going to make it. You either are or you're not. We need to get this back in the church. I believe healing will come back to the church. Amen. I believe it's still here. I don't believe it's coming back. I believe it's still here. But I believe people need to get into a position with God. Amen. Where you have favor with God. Amen. When you ask something, you have favor with God because you've done something for Him. 
Amen. When He cleaned our lives up, He made us different. Amen. We're a city. Amen. We're like a city that's set on a hill. Back years ago when I was a teenager, coming home from tent meetings, Amen. I was about 17 or 18 years old. We would drive set about 70 miles to a tent meeting over in the eastern part of Ohio and driving home at night. The old uh, street lights was different than what we got today. You could see that city for miles and miles. And it didn't have to be a big city, but you could see that light. The Bible says, Ye are the light of the world. Amen. We're the light. Amen. We need to get out here. Amen. We need to be wise master builders. The Bible says, He that is wise winneth souls. Think about that. Are we in a soul saving business? Amen. I want to be in a soul saving business. I just don't, you know, I don't want to be someplace spinning my wheels. I told a preacher a few years ago, I said, what, uh, what are you doing for this community? What does this community know about this church? Or are you just sitting here spinning your wheels and nobody knows nothing about you? Amen. You can't expect the world to come and come and hear you. You've got to go out. You've got to reach out. He said, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to the house of God. Amen. We've got to reach out. Hallelujah. Hey, you want to preach? Everybody wants to preach. Amen. Oh, give, me the, give, give me a place to preach in the church. They don't want to go out. Hallelujah. Find the real world where the prostitutes, the heroin addicts, the unbelievers. Hey man, that's the people we need to be reaching. Some of you just know the testimony that we've, we've left. I, don't, I, I guess we've left it here before, but we had a, a, a woman come to our church. Her husband was a heroin addict. and He almost died before he received God. He would receive the truth. Amen. And uh, the new shots that they got, I guess they put in your stomach or something. I don't know how they do it, but uh, if you overdose on heroin, there's a chance they can get, bring you out of it. I don't know what the drugs are about. But God can take the vilest of sinners. Amen. And He can change them. See, we're always looking for the good. Well, this one looks nice. Bring them on over to church. They look good. They'll fit right in. That ain't the kind the Lord's looking for. He's looking for people, amen, that He can help. He's, look, he's looking for you to look to people out here in the world that you can be a witness to. Amen. That sinner and that ungodly. Oh, you don't have to be vexed like Lot was with their conversation, but you can be, you can be the center of their attention if you'll let the light of God shine with, out from you. Amen. I mean, if they can see the good that's in you. Yeah. Hey Amen. Lot was vexed with their conversation. I believe he was real close to just... Ain't you glad for a praying grandma or grandpa or mommy or daddy? Many of you grow up in the church of Jesus Christ. Ain't you glad for a praying mommy? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I had a praying mommy. Twelve, one o'clock in the morning, hear mommy crying out in the night for her children. It works. Pushing the plates back. It's a hard thing for us preachers ain't it, anymore. We get together and all we want to do is eat. The king of the eateries. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. Hallelujah. But Jesus, His own disciples had some problems casting out some devils. Of course, they didn't have the Holy Ghost like we got. Or we say that we got. They come to Him. What's the problem, Lord? He said, this comes by much praying, fasting, seeking God. That's the only way. When devils, when people are 
tormented with devils, when, pe when people, not just tormented with devils, when pe there's possession. You know, the devil possesses people. We read in the Scriptures about demon-possessed people. Legion was probably in the forefront of it all because he didn't even have control over his mind. He wasn't even in his right mind. He'd cut himself. He'd done all kinds of things according to the Word of God. But when a man called Jesus Christ walked into his life, things changed. Hey man, I tell you, we need to get back. Hey man, we need to get back to living right. Hey man, we need to get back to that. That's gonna, that's gonna, who in here wouldn't want to see a miracle to, tonight or to this weekend? Hey man, it ain't a man coming to town, but it's Jesus Christ coming out of the portals of heaven, coming into men and women's lives, amen, and healing them, saving them, touching them. It's all about Him. Hallelujah. It's all about Him. All about Him. Hallelujah. It's all about Him. Hallelujah. Some of these Scriptures, I don't have Mark, but I want to go to this. Psalms chapter 9, if we can find it. We'll not be up here too much longer. Psalms chapter 9. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord? Hallelujah. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord? Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 9. Let's see if this is the one we want. Verse, I want to read verse 16. The Lord is known by His judgment which He ex executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of His own hands. I can't say those words. Verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into... Say it. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. And all the nations that forget God. Amen. All the nations. This nation has forgotten God. They forgot God a long time ago. It's before the Democrats ever got in. Years and years ago. Oh, you say, Brother Jimmy, you're awful tough on, on uh, this nation. When the founding of this nation, we had men that was in power that wrote the Declaration of Independence that with atheists. They didn't even believe in Jesus Christ. Thomas Jefferson. Hey man, read for yourselves. Go to the archives. Google it. Thomas Jefferson quotes wrote the Declaration of Independence, wrote a Bible, give every member of Congress, took every miracle that Jesus Christ out of His version of the Bible. Oh, a nation that forgets God. Philadelphia clergy of that time wanted to put in Jesus Christ we trust. Thomas Jefferson said, oh no. We'll alienate the Muslims, the Hindus, the Jews. Want a history lesson? People don't want to hear this today. Oh, this nation is blessed. Yes, it is blessed. It has been blessed. We've had men to go overseas and fight and die for this nation. In God, we do trust. The real people of God, we trust in Jesus Christ. Hey man, but our, many of the forefathers of this nation didn't. They didn't. They trusted in the almighty dollar. Amen. We're serving a God we need to put our trust in today. History teachers. I think Brother Jarrett's a math teacher. But history teachers need to know these things. These things, you know, about our country. The things that's going on in our nation. That's went on in our nation. Legalizing gay marriage. I, I thought, well, you know, this will never transpire. Oh, Brother Jim, you better shut up. You get in trouble. Transgender bathrooms. Brother Jim, you're getting in trouble. Yeah, I might get in trouble with the world, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Hey, man, it's an abomination for God for these things to be. 
Hey man, God, God is righteous. God is holy and He wants His people, amen, to live that way. If somebody's going to be saved today, it's going to be sa- they're going to be saved the same way, amen, that we are saved. They're not going to come through the Baptists, the Methodists, amen, the Pentecostals, the Apostolics. They're, not going, to, they're going to come through the cross, amen. They're going to come through the preaching of the name of Jesus Christ. For only He is the one can save. Amen. It isn't my church. It isn't Brother Bishop Spence's church, but it's his church that he purchased with his own blood. Amen. Somebody ask you what church you go to? I go to his church. Amen. What's the name of that church? The Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a revelation if you could just receive it. Amen. I don't know if they're filming this tonight or not. Amen. But listen, there is a revelation in knowing the name of God's church. I mean, it isn't something I, uh, that I received of Bishop Spence. Hey, Amen. And Bishop Spence, it wasn't something you received of Bishop Lee. But we received it by revelation when the gospel was preached to us. I mean, without revelation, amen, you can't understand. Hallelujah. Without revelation, you cannot understand. Turn to Proverbs. Just a few more scriptures. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 15. You get so many of these scriptures and you get these little pages stuck in your Bible and and it gets confusing after a while. Proverbs chapter 15. We're coming to an end tonight. Chapter 15. Say amen if you're there. All right, verse. Uh, let's begin at verse seven. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doth not so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright, the prayer of the right upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but He loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more then the hearts of the children of men? Amen. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. Amen. One of these days he came as a he came to give life. Amen. He came to give life. But one of these days, I don't know when it's going to be, but one of these days he's coming of a, as a God of wrath upon the children of disobedience. And I believe he's going the, the church is not going to face the wrath, wrath of God. No way. Amen. We're being tried. Brother Spence, we're being tried. Amen. I want you to think as we get ready to get the musicians to come and turn this over to Brother Spence tonight. Where are you going to spend eternity? Are you going to spend eternity in that place that Revelation talks about, that good place? Or are you going to spend eternity in hell? Listen, you, it's all, you, know, you know yourself better than anybody else. Or you should. You know yourself better than anybody else except God. And God knows you better than you do. There's nothing that's ever going to be covered that God won't uncover. For sin in your life, sin in anybody's life, we need to get that sin. We need to purge that out. The man down in Dyersburg, we preached here a while back about sanctification and mortification. We need to bring the body back together. In mortification, it's bringing the body together. To get the body together, to function, bring it together. to get that body together, we've got to get everything that's unclean out of it. All the malice, hate, all those things that's against God, we've got to get that out of the body before we can see the body function, Sister Paula. Amen. Bishop Spence. We love you. I hope we've said something that will encourage you. I hope I've said something that 
maybe hearing the Word of God that will show you that we need to live close as we can possibly live because the hour is late. Bishop Spence. Praise the Lord, church. Stand with us. Good message, brother. Good message. Amen. I believe it. It's the Word. God's coming back. Hell has enlarged herself without measure. I don't find in the Scriptures, amen, where the Bible ever talks about heaven enlarging itself. Because that's where a few there be that enter therein. But at that broad gate, many go in thereat. Hell is enlarging herself. But I don't want it to be enlarged for me, friend. I want to go into the straight and narrow way. Can you say amen? Give us a song.